All right, so I want you to be aware of the fact that some ionic compounds and some polar covalent compounds are not very soluble. Some, some ionic compounds, the attraction between the ions in that compound are so strong, they just don't dissolve very well. Uh, the same is true for some polar covalent compounds. They just don't dissolve very well. And uh, sometimes you'll have ions that will, will actually dissolve in, in water, but if they come into contact with other ions, they will immediately bond with those ions. And so you can have two liquid solutions combined together and, and a solid will be formed uh, by that mixture. And so what we refer to that as is a precipitate. So a precipitate is a solid that emerges from a liquid solution. So on page 264 in your book, there's actually an experiment that, that produces a precipitate. And it's a mixture between str a strontium chloride solution. And when we say a uh, solution, we're saying that, that this has been dissolved in water, right? That's what it means if you see the AQ symbol, the aqueous symbol next to a compound, it means it's been dissolved in water. So you have this strontium chloride solution that's been uh, mixed with a sodium hydroxide solution. And what happens when these are mixed together, they form solid strontium hydroxide. Now, um, maybe it sounds a little confusing to say all of that, but we actually know enough now to be able to write down that chemical equation and figure it out and then balance it. So let's, let's take a shot at that. So we start with a strontium chloride solution, SRCL, it's aqueous, it's been dissolved in water. And we mix that, we combine that with a sodium hydroxide solution, also aqueous. And we said what's produced by that is strontium, solid strontium hydroxide. So we should be able to look at our, at our periodic table at strontium and then also look at our table on page 245, which has our polyatomic ions and figure out that, that strontium hydroxide would have two hydroxide um, polyatomic ions and one uh, strontium atom. And then uh, what do we have left over? Well, we've got uh, basically sodium and chlorine left over. And so what's that going to form? It's going to form a, um, the uh, ionic compound we're so familiar with, sodium chloride or, or table salt, right? NaCl, but also as an aqueous solution. Because remember, the only precipitate, the only thing that's solid out of this is the strontium hydroxide. Okay, so let's balance the equation now. Basically, if we put a um, if we put a 2 in front of the NaOH, because we know that we've got two hydroxide polyatomic ions on the right side of our equation, then that'll balance the number of, of hydroxide uh, polyatomic ions. But we've got to now adjust the number of sodium atoms, because we've got two of those on the left. Let's put, make sure we have two of those on the right, putting the 2 in front of the NaCl. Um, if we check back on the left, that already matches the number of chlorine atoms that we have on the left side here. So it looks like our equation is balanced. So we should recognize this as a double displacement reaction, right? Basically, the chlorine has swapped places with the hydroxide polyatomic ion. And so let's do an example um, that, that'll give us a chance to work through another one of these types of problems. This is example 9.1 in our book, and it's on page 265. Again, we've got to remember our chart of polyatomic ions on page 245. So we're going to have to refer back to that as we do this example. So example 9.1 says this, a chemist has a solution of sodium carbonate and another solution of aluminum nitrate. When he mixes them, a precipitate forms. Some solid forms as these two liquids are mixed. If aluminum carbonate is insoluble in water, if it's insoluble in water, it won't dissolve in water. That means that's our solid right there, aluminum carbonate. Then what is the chemical equation for the reaction that happened? All right, so I've already typed out each of our, um, each of our uh, compounds that are in this particular formula, except for the last one. We'll talk about that in just a second. But first we have aluminum, um, I'm sorry, first we have sodium carbonate. And if we, we got to figure out the chemical uh, formula for that. Sodium, of course, is Na. Um, we remember that, uh, let me get the right, sorry, let me get the right drawing tool here. We remember that Na is in column 1A, and so it's going to form a one plus ion. 
carbonate, we have to look at our pay our uh, our table on page 245, and we look up carbonate, and we see that it's CO3 with a two negative charge. So CO3 with a two negative charge. Okay, we swap and drop, and so that means that the chemical formula for sodium carbonate is Na2CO3. All right, and then this one, and this is going to be um, aqueous. Um, so we'll we'll go ahead and let's write it down here where we've got a little more room. Whoops. Let's see, let's clear that off. So N A two C O three. All right, aqueous. Okay, plus aluminum nitrate. Let's talk about that for a second. Aluminum is in column three A on the periodic table. So aluminum is going to have a three plus charge. Our common polyatomic ions table tells us that nitrate is NO3 minus, so N, let's see, NO3 with a one negative charge. So the formula for that is going to be AL. We swap and drop. We've got to have three of these NO3 ions, so we've got to put a three down here. And so that's going to be our next substance. That's also going to be aqueous. Based on the way the problem read. And so that is going to produce a precipitate, which we know to be aluminum carbonate. Again, Al, column 3A, so it has a 3 plus charge. Um, carbonate, uh, table on page 245, tells us that that's CO3. Two negative, so swap and drop to get Al2, and in parentheses CO3, and we've got three of those. So let's bring that down here, Al2CO3, three of them. And so finally, for this kind of mystery compound down here, we just have to see what's left over. Um, see, in our, we see that in our original uh, uh, combination here, we have. Uh, sodium, so sodium's unaccounted for over here, right? We've got the, the Al came over, and then the CO3, uh, that, that came over, but what's missing is the Na and the NO3. So we, we're, we've got to deal with both of those. So we've got this final compound that's going to be Na. Again, it's in column one, so it's going to have a plus one charge, one plus charge, and then we have NO3. Three. And so that's going to form sodium nitrate, right? So when we swap and drop there, we just got ones next to each of those. So here's our sodium nitrate. I just realized that I need to, I need the eraser here because this I need to identify as our solid. So let's do that. This is our solid. And then finally, the sodium nitrate down here. NO3. And since the other one was the solid, then this is still going to be in, dissolved in the liquid, so it's going to be aqueous. All right, so now we've got our chemical equation. All we have to do is balance this chemical, chemical equation, right? Um, so let's start with the, the ALs because that just jumps out at me as being one of the simpler ones. Um, now we have two ALs on this side and two ALs on this side. That gives us a total of six NO3s now, right? And so let's put a six in front of the NO3. Um, once we do that, we see we need six NAs. In order to do that, we put a three in front of the Na over here, uh, the Na2. And uh, that means we need three CO3s on both sides. Um, we look over here, hey, we've already got three CO3s. So I think we're balanced. Let's double check that. Six NAs here, six NAs here, uh, three CO3 polyatomic ions right here. And we've got three CO3s on this side, two ALs, two ALs here, and then um, a total of six NO3s, and we've got six NO3s right over here. So we're balanced. This is our, woo, it's kind of hard to draw these lines. Still learning this little drawing tool. Okay, so there's our final answer. Um, so that's it for this section. We'll, uh, we'll move on next to talk about concentration.